Welcome. The landscape of the grocery store is constantly changing, making it difficult for consumers to make better food choices. With the help of key health professionals like you, consumers can navigate the grocery aisles and make better choices. Today we're going to take a walk through the store using our grocery tour guide and learn about the tips, tools, and tricks you can use to help your consumers make better food choices. You'll want to schedule your grocery tour at off-peak times. You can reach out to the store manager to find out that information. Typically though, that's early in the week or sometimes weekends you can do nighttime tours. Keep your group size manageable, eight to 12 people at the most, and include interactive activities as you go throughout the store to keep your participants engaged. And finally, refer to your Milk Means More grocery store tour guide for more tips on marketing and planning your grocery store tour. So now that you have the base of your tour planned, about a week before your tour, you wanna make sure that you send out reminders to all your tour participants and identify a meeting place at the store, like the customer service desk. You'll also wanna prepare any of your handouts, giveaways you may have, Review any critical information like the new nutrition facts labels or maybe uh, more difficult to answer questions. And then also you'll want to send a text reminder the day of the tour or the day before the tour to make sure your participants remember. Now the day of the tour, you wanna to make sure you arrive early, let the store know that you're there. Take a quick walk through the store and then come to the uh, meeting place you've identified to meet your guests. You'll want to run through housekeeping notes with your guests like shopper courtesy, where the restrooms are, and what to do with coats. You can grab a cart and let your group put their coats in a cart and have somebody in charge of the cart. Or if you've arranged a conference room in advance, they can use the conference room. But remember, they must keep all valuables with them. Now, let's get this tour going. So in produce, like any other section of the store, please remember to share the unique nutrition and health benefits of the foods offered in that area. There's so many points you could share, so keep it to about three to five nutrition points that you really want to communicate. When you do your tour, start with an icebreaker. So maybe you want to have your group share their favorite veggie recipe, or you can do something fun like um, ask your participants to identify five veggies and fruit that start with the letter K. Five fruits and vegetables a day, five cups a day is really what we're aiming for when it goes to how much we should have every day. And then we want to remember to aim for the rainbow. These are key tips that you know and you share, but remembering that those that are dark green, orange, red, give that vitamin A source we want people having every day, and then citrus and many other vegetables provide a vitamin C source we want every day. I would also highlight things like the cruciferous vegetables, that cabbage family of vegetables, because they have some very powerful health benefits. So one of the biggest barriers too is um, people don't know what to do with fruits and vegetables. So if you take some time to talk with your participants about how to prepare. So how do I select, prepare, and store fruits and vegetables? You can help them increase your intake. Another great interactive activity you can do with your participants. And then weave in food safety wherever you can. So in the produce area, the big thing is anything that's not labeled triple washed or ready to eat, you wanna make sure you wash it before you consume it or before you even slice into it. Meat can fit into anybody's healthy diet. Meat is actually a good source of some nutrients that aren't readily absorbable in the plant form, like heme iron or vitamin B12. A serving size of meat is about three to three and a half ounces, so use visuals like uh, the palm of a woman's hand or a deck of cards to give your shoppers an idea of what a serving looks like. Also remember when we're shopping in the meat area, the leanest cuts will come from the loin and round. So looking for those key words when you're shopping will help your consumers select better cuts of meat. 
And one thing I like to do over here in the meet area is I like to have my participants um, and get involved in an activity. So something interactive like give me 10 ideas that you can do with a pound of lean ground beef or a pound of poultry. Here we are in sensational seafood. Seafood, of course, and fish are a great source of protein and those healthy omega-3 fatty acids. We know those are found chiefly in fish like salmon and mackerel and canned sardines. The recommendation for fish intake for all people, that includes kids and even pregnant women, is about 12 ounces per week. And again, fresh, frozen, canned will all fit that recommendation for healthy fish intake. One of the biggest barriers to consuming fish is just not knowing how to cook it. Fish is the original fast food. It's so easy to do. All you really need to do is season it. And then you're gonna cook it high heat, 400, 450 degrees, for about 10 minutes per inch of thickness. So it'll be opaque, flaky, and it's really easy to do. 10 minutes per inch of thickness under high heat. Looking at other sources of great lean protein for our diets, when we think about poultry, skinless poultry, ground turkey, ground chicken, those from the ground breast meat are very lean to use. Poultry is a great, versatile, affordable, and familiar ingredient for your shoppers. So giving them lots of ideas of how to prepare it, how to use it, will really extend their diet variety. And there's a great opportunity here to teach some food safety as well. Teach your shoppers, don't wash that uh, poultry before you use it. What research tells us is that washing it first ends up splashing bacteria around the kitchen. So take it from the package to cook it. And then also remind your shoppers that they want to cook poultry and any ground meat for that matter to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. There's many quick and easy meal solution ideas in the deli and bakery area of the grocery store. So help consumers make better choices here. Remember, there's no good food or bad food here. We want to meet the consumer where they are and help them make changes that are sustainable and move toward a better pattern of eating. You know, I always like to share a story when I do grocery store tour trainings. There was a time uh, several years ago when I was leading a tour through the store and we were in the prepared meat, deli meat area of the store. And I mentioned something about a packaged meal food that was good to send in kids' lunch boxes. And then I kind of said how they were full of sodium and fat and really had no nutrition benefit. At the end of the tour, I had a woman approach me and say that those were things that she sent with her kids to school for lunch frequently. She felt bad about what I had said, the way I had said it, and I missed that opportunity to tell her, how can I take these less nutrient-dense foods and balance them with better food choices? So maybe that prepared lunch meal with an apple in a glass of skim milk or low-fat milk would be a way to bring out some more nutrition in that food product. Now lastly, there's a lot of what we like to call sprinkle foods in the deli and bakery area. So remember, life is about enjoying foods that we eat. And everybody can have a little bit of indulgent foods now and then. Teach consumers how to understand what it is to eat in moderation when it comes to these sprinkle foods in their diets. Our next stop is the fresh frozen area of the supermarket. Frozen foods offer health, convenience, and affordability. Frozen fruits and vegetables are actually harvested within 24 hours and offer the same nutrition as their fresh counterparts. Knowing this might help to break down some consumption barriers with your shoppers. Frozen meals can actually fit nicely into those, those diets of people who are trying to manage their weight. Look for frozen meals that have between four and 500 calories, but less than 600 milligrams sodium 
per serving. Now some key talking points when we're in the frozen food aisles. We want to look for fruits and vegetables that don't have added sauces or sugars as a general rule. And frozen fruits and vegetables actually make great additions to recipes. You can use frozen vegetables to pump up the nutrition in soups and stews and casseroles. Or frozen fruit is easily paired with uh, yogurt and milk in the morning to make smoothies or parfaits or even using an overnight oats. A fun thing I love to do in the frozen food section is to have the participants um, actually participate in an activity. I ask them, you know, let's pick out three or four different frozen foods that we can combine together to make a complete balanced meal. Don't let the shop the perimeter myth keep your shoppers from consuming healthy whole grains. You want to make sure that they're consuming whole grains and consuming a variety of grains. So encourage your shoppers to look for different grains and experiment with things like farro and quinoa, teff, barley. Just have some fun with it. And when we're looking at canned foods as well, we want to find a way to stock our pantry. Canned foods are just a very healthy, affordable, and convenient food group to add to anybody's home. And canned foods have a long shelf life. Look for canned foods that are either reduced sodium or you can encourage your shoppers to rinse and drain beans, legumes, canned vegetables to cut back the sodium by about 40%. And be careful though when looking at, especially with like canned beans, the sodium, reduced sodium versions, some of those are still relatively high in sodium. So fun thing I like to do over here in the canned food area is to make sure that consumers know, one, looking for lower sodium items, two, looking for canned fruits that are packed in juice or water, and three, let's experiment with how would I stock my pantry? So what are like the three essential foods that you need to keep in your pantry to make an easy meal? Have the group participate and come up with some fun, interesting, creative ideas. So now we're over in the cereal aisle. We're getting into the grains of the grocery store. And here in the cereal aisle, I love to have my tour participants do an activity. So I like to teach them label reading here. So what I'll do is I'll have them pick out their favorite cereal. Maybe it's a kid's cereal. Maybe it's one that they think is healthy. And I teach them how to read labels. I start with looking at a voluntary program called Facts Up Front. Now, not all manufacturers use facts up front, but those that do make it easy to compare some nutrients between products. The nutrients that are listed are typically calories per serving, how much saturated fat, the amount of sodium, and how much total sugar is in that product. So at a glance, consumers can compare. Then what we like to do is flip over the side and look at that nutrition facts panel. And we're going to look at serving size. Serving size helps keep portion control in mind and give your shoppers a visual idea of what a serving size is. Maybe the size of your fist is a half cup. Those types of visual images really help them when they're sitting down at the table and trying to figure out how much should I eat. So we want to know serving size, calories per serving. We're also going to be looking at total fat, and we're going to be looking at carb content. When it comes to carbohydrates, we want to look at total sugar. The new Nutrition Facts label will also give us added sugars, which will also help us differentiate between naturally occurring and then those added sugars. Fiber is something really important to look at as well. And then we want to shoot down to the ingredient list and teach consumers that ingredients are listed in the order of prominence in the product. So when we're in the grains area, the cereals, the breads, we want to make sure that a whole grain is the first ingredient. Now one of the last things you want to do is make sure you discuss the importance of fiber. We're only reaching about half the amount of fiber we need every day. We get about 14 grams of fiber per day and we want 25 to 35 grams, right? We know that. So talking about insoluble fiber and soluble fiber. Benefits of soluble fiber like we find in oats, 
that helps to lower blood cholesterol, stabilize blood sugars, and insoluble fiber. That kind, that's roughage, that helps with digestive health. And you can always teach your consumers that in equals out. So insoluble fiber helps with digestive motility. Time to get spicy. Herbs and spices are a great way to flavor your foods. And one of the biggest barriers to cooking at home is really, as we've talked, not knowing how to prepare and cook foods. Using herbs and spices, we can add flavor without having to add salt. So savory herb blends will add flavor to some of those savory dishes. And citrus will help reduce the need for sodium. Those are great flavors to use. When you're looking at trying to reduce the need for added sugars, things like cinnamon and nutmeg and even vanilla extract can be added to help cut back on the amount of sugar that you need. So, and while we're talking about cooking, we wanna look at the different types of oils that we use for cooking as well. When we're looking at high heat cooking, so that is like 400 degrees and higher, we really want to use a vegetable oil that's stable at high temperatures. So something like an avocado oil, which is stable up to about 450 degrees, or grapeseed oil. These are great things for consumers to have on hand for those high heat stir fry kind of cooking methods. And when you're talking about moderate heat cooking methods, and what's perfect for things like salad dressings, are your olive oils. Olive oil is graded by the number of pressings. So the first pressed is called extra virgin. That's the most flavorful. And you can actually reduce the amount of olive oil you have to use if you use that extra virgin first pressed olive oil. And I think the last point I wanna make here about fats is coconut oil. And coconut oils have gotten to be very popular, but we gotta keep in mind here a couple of things. One, Coconut is a saturated fat. And two, coconut oil imparts a lot of flavor, so it can change the flavor of the dishes when you use it in cooking. The last group here I want to highlight, and something you want to consider when making your own things like salad dressings, are vinegars. So that um, tart flavor can help you use less sodium in your cooking, and it will also help make a great flavored salad dressing. Using something like an apple cider vinegar is, has less bite than traditional vinegar, and so that makes a good salad dressing. Balsamic vinegars are great and flavorful, but if they're too rich and too much body for you, try like a red wine vinegar. So use this section of the store to encourage your participants to experiment with flavors, different vinegars and oils and spices, to add flavor to their foods without adding extra sodium. Most Americans don't consume the recommended servings of dairy every day. Dairy milk offers 13 essential nutrients, including eight grams of protein per serving. There's something in the dairy case for everybody. There's chocolate milk for the sports-minded, lactose-free milk for those who are concerned about lactose intolerance, and a variety of fat percentages to meet anybody's food preferences. Calcium and vitamin D are essential during those teen years, the bone building years, through adulthood to maintain our health and then to meet our increasing calcium needs as we age. The American Academy of Pediatrics does recommend milk with meals. Now be careful when comparing plant-based beverages to dairy milk. Plant-based beverages may not have the same nutrients that milk offers and may not have the same amount of protein. Plant-based beverages are not recommended for children five and under due to the variability of ingredient content and the lack of evidence for adequate nutrient bioavailability. Dairy milk is minimally processed, nutrient-rich, and sustainably produced compared to plant-based beverages that contain several ingredients and are ultra-processed. Milk is produced using three simple ingredients, milk, vitamin D, and vitamin A. Cow's milk is free of antibiotics and does not contain any added hormones. So be in the know and compare those nutrition labels. The 
grocery store can be overwhelming. There are 40,000 or more SKUs in the grocery store, meaning 40,000 or more buying decisions a consumer needs to make. You can use your expertise to help consumers find better for them choices that are within what they like, their food preferences. Take for instance the yogurt aisle. Look at all the different choices here. Now in choosing yogurts, aim for plain or vanilla flavors that you can add your own fruit or toppings to. Yogurt and kefir are kefir, don't fear the kefir. Yogurt and kefir are great sources of calcium, protein, and probiotics that support digestive and immune health. So you can add those foods in your diet and they are often better tolerated by those who have lactose intolerance as well. So encourage consumers to consume yogurt and kefir in their daily diet. I love cheese. Now in general, cheese is a great source of calcium and protein. Hard cheese like sharp cheddar and Parmesan, those are really low in lactose due to the aging process and often well tolerated by those with lactose intolerance. Serving size of cheese is about one to one and a half ounces and really adds flavor to any dishes or a great way to add some protein to snack time. One more stop in fresh foods areas of the store. The eggs area and the juice can be a quick stop for you. Eggs are a great source of protein. They're inexpensive and whole eggs actually offer some essential nutrients like choline and selenium. Uh, the current recommendation for eggs right now is about up to seven per week. Now when it comes to having juice in the diet, juice can fit into a healthy diet within limits. Juice is recommended in smaller portions for children, so toddlers should only have about four ounces of juice per day. School-age kids, four to six-year-olds, can have up to six ounces per day. And then for children age seven all the way up into adults, it's about eight ounces of juice per day. And let's look for 100% juice. And remember that we only want to have one serving of juice per day as part of our five cups of fruits and vegetables every day. It's snack time. Nearly all of Americans snack. In fact, half of Americans snack two to three times a day. Snacks can be a healthy part of the diet of growing children. 25% of their calories come from snacks. So be cautious in the snack aisle and teach your consumers to pick out healthy whole grains. Watch out for those prepackaged foods that might not have all of those health benefits in them. So your balanced snack equation is actually adding together a nice fiber rich healthy whole grain. You can add in there a protein or a dairy and then finish it off by rounding it out with a fruit or a vegetable serving for a healthy balanced snack equation. As you plan your grocery store tour, there are many additional resources in your grocery store tour guide that can help you to prepare. If your tour is going to focus on a specific health topic, including heart health, diabetes prevention and management, or celiac disease and gluten-free, please reference the color-coded talking points. Each section of the grocery store tour has a disease management call-out box with different tips you may want to share with participants. For example, if you are delivering a tour during February, which is Heart Health Month, you may want to mention that participants should look for reduced fat dairy options to help control weight when you reach the dairy, eggs, and spreads part of your tour. Section 3 of your guide is designed as a reference section. Inside, you will find a quick MyPlate overview with basic information about each of the five food groups. It also includes food tips for consumers for each food group, which can be helpful sound bites of information to share with tour participants. This section of your tour guide includes tips for managing tour participants, which cover topics like negative comments, lagging participants, communicating and translating science, and more. Next, you will find difficult questions and comments on topics including GMOs, organics, canned foods, hormones, and pesticides. You are not an expert in everything, and that is okay. Use this section to gather additional information that can prepare you for tough questions from participants. If you don't know an answer, 
ask the participant for their contact information, and follow up once you are able to connect with the proper resource. The last part of Section 3 includes resources for nutrition and meal planning. Use these websites to gather additional information that you may want for your tour. Section 4 of the guide contains reproducible handouts. All of the resources in this guide can be easily copied. Many of them are available to order for free through Milk Means More. Each handout focuses on a topic that may be unique to your tour group. For example, a group of moms might benefit from the 10 shopping tips for shopping with kids, or a group of students might benefit from the nutrition facts label to reinforce the activities you plan for your tour. Use the handouts to support the information you are delivering on your tour. Reach out to Milk Means More to order additional handouts and giveaways to support you in your grocery store tour. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that we inspired you to do grocery store tours of your own. Remember to refer to your Milk Means More grocery store tour guide for more resources, the references, handouts, and you know, answers to those difficult questions you might get during the supermarket tour. And now Courtney has more information to share with you. Now that you've completed your grocery store tour training, log on to milkmeansmore.org. Let us know you've completed your training and we'll send you a kit with everything that you need to get started. It'll include handouts for your participants and fun giveaways. It'll also include information about how to complete surveys and evaluations and stay in the know about updates to our program. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>